I'm not the biggest fan of Chromatic Aberration ever. I think the effect is a little bit gimmicky, but it is something that gets requested in my YouTube comments once in a while, and because I've got basic shader image processing effects on the brain, much like last week, I decided that it's finally time for me to tackle the subject. So Chromatic Aberration, for those who don't know, is... Um, you've probably seen it in, like, movies or something when some scene of extreme pandemonium is unfolding. It's the effect where... Uh, if you try to focus light of different colors, light of different wavelengths will bend different amounts on a lens. And if the lens isn't made right and doesn't bring the, uh, the light of different wavelengths back into focus on the photoreceptor of the camera, uh, you can see effects where the red, green, and blue components of an image will be offset from each other from, by some amount. Games might use something like this to, uh, to make the player feel a little bit dazed when, for example, the player character takes a lot of damage from something or something like that. In much the same way that they might use something like Screen Shake. And if you look closely at, for example, the fountain in the middle of this image, you can see that the red, uh, green, and blue, like, outlines of the, uh, the fountain are all offset from each other by different amounts. If you look around different parts of the image, you can see some other funny effects, such as the sky in the background. Uh, having a bit of a blue, like, ghost in front of him, or this leaf down here having a little bit of a, like, blue-ish shadow underneath it. That's chromatic aberration. So the way that this works, the way that you can simulate this in a shader is actually, uh, very simple. I'm just going to be writing a few lines of code here in the fragment shader, and I'm actually not going to be doing any mucking around in the draw event, no passing uniforms in or anything. I should probably get rid of this posterization level thing, because that's just a carryover from, uh from uh, the last video. No more posterization level. Uh, if we go over into the fragment shader, uh, the way that you would ordinarily put an image on the screen in the fragment shader is by sampling from a texture at v underscore v text cord, uh, which game maker will pass, well, your, which your GPU will pass from the vertex shader. Uh, but if we wanted to do a chromatic aberration effect, we could apply a little bit of a different offset to that v underscore v text cord for each of the different red, green, and blue color channels. Before proceeding, let me define a few. So if I say vec2 off underscore red, uh, off red, I believe was the name of the main character in Handmaid's Tale, I'm going to define this as a, a vector 2 of, let's say, like 0 0.011, negative 0 0.009. Uh, vec2 off green can be a vec2 composed of, uh, let's say, like 0 0.003, um, 0 0.0. How about 0, 06? Uh, vec2 off underscore blue is a vec2 composed of, let's say, 0 point, negative 0 0.006 in the opposite direction of this, of this one. And uh, how about positive 0 0.002? So um, three vector twos, they're all going to have very small uh, values. This is going to be the amount of texture coordinates that each of these color channels are offset by. Hey. Uh, later on, if you want to be fancy, you can pass these into the shader as a uniform if you want to have the, like, level of chromatic aberration, like, dancing around a little bit. Again, maybe you want to treat that as a, um, like a luminal screen shake effect, um, when your character takes a hit or something like that. Anyway. Uh, instead of sampling from the base image, I'm going to, I think, define a vector 4, which is going to be just the output color. Uh, the output is going to have the red, green, and blue color channels set to some value. Um, I'll start with red, so output.red can equal texture 2D, uh, gm underscore base texture, nothing funny here. Uh, the texture coordinate is going to be v underscore v text chord plus uh, the offset of the red color channel, and from this we're just going to take the red component, uh, output.green and output.blue are going to be the same thing but with offset green and offset uh, blue so that we are going to take uh, the green and blue color channels of pixels that are a little bit away from our um, from our source pixel and uh, the alpha, in my case, alpha doesn't really matter because we're just applying this to like a screen space um, like the application surface, well, not the application surface, but the only thing that's on screen. Uh, if you want, you might want to say output.alpha is going to equal texture 2D of just the, the alpha of the actual pixel that you're trying to render. I don't think that's of crucial importance. Anyway, when we run the game now, 
we are going to see that um, vector for output. Why don't you like that? Is that like a reserved word in a shader or something? That's probably... Tell me that's not a reserved word in a shader. Illegal use of reserved words. Fine, okay, I'll think of another word that's not reserved. Um, output color, how about? All right. So now when we've done that, we can see that we've got, oh, 3D glasses is the other thing that comes to mind when I see this. Again, rather silly. I don't think anyone seriously is trying to make a game that works with 3D glasses, but if you want red, green, and blue to all have their colors shifted by some amount, I have no idea what this would look like if you looked at it through one of those like 90s 3D glasses with the magenta and cayenne lenses. But uh, if you want an effect that looks something like that, uh, chromatic aberration, definitely summons that to mind. So again, we've got the different color channels of, for example, this fountain in the middle offset by some amount. It's a different offset than what we had at the beginning of the video because I just made up these numbers um, on the spot. Uh, you can see the guy in the background is definitely looking a lot more ghosty than he was a minute ago. Let's see what some of these other pictures look like. All right, these trees are certainly having a day uh, in, the, uh, in the conservatory. The marigolds are... Uh, Mostly red and green, a little bit of blue. Uh, the bright yellow is showing where the red and the green channels are overlapping. So that's chromatic aberration. Uh, it's not a complicated concept. Uh, again, I'm not a fan of it. I think it's a silly gimmick, but uh, people do ask sometimes if this is something that you're actually interested in. Feel free to take this fairly simple formula and play around with it. Again, you could pass these in as a uniform and you could apply a screen shake effect of sorts to the uh, red, green, and blue offset values so that you um, so that you see it like coming into and out of focus a little bit. Uh, speaking of focus, you could also use this in tandem with like a depth of field effect. I forget if I mentioned that earlier, but if you want the, uh, like the middle of the screen, for example, to be in focus and you want to use the depth of field tilt shift effect to put the, the parts of the, of the image that are out of focus have a, uh, a stronger chromatic aberration, you can do that as well. Uh, go ahead and play around with it. But anyway, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. If you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the video description. Um, I'll also have a link to the, uh, I believe I mentioned this guy last time, David Lettier 3D Game Shaders for Beginners uh, GitHub repository, which has um, posts about stuff like this and about all kinds of other effects that you might be interested in if you're interested in this sort of thing down in the video description. I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one tutorial tutorial like this, and one let's make a game, currently a 3D Zelda like wizard game, so if any of that appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. Uh, Go Wishless Wizard Ducks, which is the game that I like to work on when I'm, when I'm not doing YouTube stuff. Links will be found down there as well. I hope you all found this interesting, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.